and welcome to this week's edition of the Waldorf Weekly News section. I'm filling in for Carson Davis who has thrown his back out, but realized right after he threw it, it was knowledge, and he needs it back. So if you do see his back, please dial 1-800-GET-BACK. Again, that's 1-800-GET-BACK if you find Carson Davis's back. In Brazil, they've experienced massive landslides, and over 250 people have lost their lives. Our feelings are with their families, and we hope that that gets solved. Isn't that right, friends? Right. <laughs> Two thirds of the Australian state of Queensland has been declared a national disaster as flood water reaches above four meters. And there is a petition in the state of Maine to keep healthcare people have signed a petition to Eternal General Bill Schneider to keep this healthcare. So if you haven't signed it, please do sign it. Also, in other news, I'm going to be living in Egypt. <laughs> uh, uh, Arizona Congresswoman Gabrielle Giffords uh, is steadily recovering after receiving a bullet to the noggin on uh, Saturday. She is uh, recovering and she is expected to make a full recovery in due time. Uh, and there is snow in 49 <laughs> out of 50 United States uh, as the snowstorm continues to move up the eastern seaboard. We hope you have enjoyed this uh, new section. Isn't that right, lads? Good morning and welcome to Leafs Corner. This week we're going to be talking about Bambinos and their secondhand smoking. See, at Pineland here, we share our building with a little kindergarten, mainly Bambinos. And they're watched by these beefy 30-year-old women who like to smoke a lot. And they like to take their smoke breaks right beneath our school. And on any day, you could be walking down the hall and suddenly the door blows open and suddenly, boom! A gross reek of disgusting menthol cigarettes hits you right in the face. And then, and then you know what these ladies do? They watch little kids. They help them wash their hands and change their diapers with their fingers smelling like cigarettes and nicotine. It's ridiculous. Don't smoke. Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Cooking on the Waldorf Weekly. We are going to try to make sauerkraut. So here we can see everything we need. A head of cabbage, a jar, some sea salt, and a good sharp knife. As you can see I've taken the drier outer leaves off the cabbage um, because they're harder to eat and they don't taste as good. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this head and I'm going to chop it in half. So now, as you can see, I have fairly mutilated this cabbage, and I have placed it all in a nice metal bowl. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take some salt, sea salt, and I'm going to add that to the cabbage, and then I'm going to begin to knead it. So here we go, I'm going to add a bit of salt, and normally you want to add one tablespoon per quart of cabbage. Now with good clean hands, I'm going to start just kneading and mashing the cabbage. And I can even take another tool and do that with, with that if I want to, like a rolling pin or a baseball bat or something. So. so now I think our cabbage is is well mashed. So now I'm going to take it and I'm going to put it in the jar. Now I am going to pack it in there using the end of a rolling pin. So once you've mashed enough that the liquid that comes out of the cabbage begins to cover the cabbage, that's probably enough. 
So at that point, you can let the cabbage sit. And what, I'm, what you need to do is you need to put a weight on top of it. For my weight, I'm going to use a glass full of water. I'm just going to place it right on top of the sauerkraut. Now I'm going to let that sit for a few days and hopefully when I come back I'll have a fresh batch of sauerkraut waiting for me. This has been another episode of Cooking on Waldorf Weekly. Thanks folks. Welcome to Tyler's Book Emporium. We have a broad a range of any book you could ever want. My personal favorite is Movie Dick. And this week we have a special offer. This copy, a limited edition, is only $5.99. Now that is a deal that no one can beat. And remember, at Tyler's Book Emporium, it's always cheap. Hello and welcome to the Waldorf Weekly Sports Section. The American League Waldorf Ski Team, uh, the boys' side came in fifth. The girls did not actually have enough skiers to place. We hope they will in the in future. There is a race on Friday which will be in the classical style. Also, the New England Patriots and the New York Jets will be playing next week in a playoff game. A defensive lineman from the New York Jets is injured, so hopefully that gives the New England Patriots the heads up. Go Patriots! And that's about it for sports in the Waldorf Weekly. Hello, and welcome back to Interviews with Brian! My guest today is Sophie Simmons. Now, as before, I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. Please answer them in a calm and creative way, and do not treat it like a big deal. Let's get started! Firstly, what is your favorite painting of Vincent van Gogh's? Well, I would say it's a tie between um, the lone ear in a box and starry like night. That one. Yes, ironically enough, that is my favorite van Gogh painting. Yeah. Some place. Oh. How would you compare my replica to his version? Well, I would say that yours belongs in the Louvre. Yes, it's so magnificent, you know, just brilliant. That was going to leave it yes. on my desk. Next, how many carpets do you have in your home? Carpets? Say, um, about 50 to 60 carpets. That many carpets? Yeah, we, we keep them in one square by one foot by foot. Uh, I could never have that many. See, I have the rare fear of car being smothered under a carpet, so I could never have that many carpets in my home. What's, just... what's that called? I have no idea. I've never right. told that to anyone before. Wow. Yeah, it's pretty bad. The masses now know my secret. <laughs> Next, what is the meaning of life? Wow. Um, well, I think that's... Uh... Um, a priest. Mm, I disagree completely. Now, for the last question, on a scale of one to five, with five being the highest, how would you rate me? In what way? Just in general. <laughs> what? In general? Com okay. I, I would say about a four and a half. Four and a half. That has been another exciting round of interviews with fun. Thank you, Sophie. Thank you. And the word for the week this week is Farron Cassidy. F-A-R-R-A-N-C-A-S-S-I-D-Y Farron Cassidy. It's a noun, and it means a long and ultimately unsuccessful attempt to undo someone's bra. Again, that's Farron Cassidy. F-A-R-R-A-N-C-A-S-S-I-D-Y <laughs> Finally finished. Oh, it's wonderful, just brilliant, absolutely brilliant. I can't wait. The headlines will read: "The Greatest Play Ever Written by William Shakespeare." It, it, it finishes up the first play with just such an eloquent beauty that oh, can't even be put into words, even by me. Oh, better go save it. good enough. And finished. <sighs> no. 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 
Welcome to the Waldorf Weekly Useless Facts section. Today, we have four facts. Number one, the red spot on 7-Up cans comes from its inventor who was an albino and had red eyes. Two, 315 entries in the Webster's 1996 dictionary were misspelled. Three, during the California Gold Rush of 1849, miners frequently sent their laundry to Honolulu for washing and pressing. Due to the high costs in California during these years, it was deemed more feasible to send the shirts to Hawaii for servicing, even with shipping costs. And finally, if you have three quarters, four dimes, and four pennies, you have a dollar nineteen. Incidentally, you also have the largest amount of money in coins without being able to make change for any dollar bill. And also, as a bonus, we have one not so useless fact this week. If you are packing sliced apples in lunch, you can pack them with carrots to keep them from turning brown. This has been the useless fact section of the Waldorf Weekly. Thanks. Hello and welcome to the gossip section of Waldorf Weekly. Last week there was nothing to gossip about so instead we're going to do a tour of our little school. So. First we have our entrance hallway, our photographs displaying everything we've done. And there's our bathroom, which we are not allowed to show you because apparently that's illegal. Take it away. This is the stage room. Um, this usually is inhibited by Mr. Sloan, once in a while David Barham. When Mr. Sloan permits it, our good old piano loved greatly. Here we have the seniors between the wars. Blackboard and some paintings by Jeremy and Benjamin. We have our dying plants on the windowsill and a bookshelf that's never used with some art history books. <laughs> Here we move down into our science and art section of the building. Uh, the walls are lined with many paintings done by mostly the teachers, um, sometimes the students. We don't have any school pets, which is kind of a disappointment, seeing as we should. I think at one point we had some goldfish. Here we are in the science room, usually used by Mr. Brian or Miss Buck. On the walls, you'll see they're lined by different elements. And there we have projected geometry. On the blackboards, you'll typically see parts of animals, math equations. Silly drawings. Human genitals. You never know what will appear. Miscellaneous things. Let's move into the art room. This is the art room. Alright, so this leads us to our vertical center where children who are sick or bored or not interested in participating in class can vertically uh, be in this room. There are computers for the entertainment of the students. There's music which we use quite often, all the time. We have our mug center for those who want to make hot chocolate. We're all about cum lotus at the school. <laughs> and, and here we have our teacher's office, and it's not very interesting. We have some pictures of our German class being really cute together. And we have Mr. O'Brien's office. Typically, you'll see students here if they have been bad or misjudged. Here we have our little tiny German room uh, for the and German students. Good talk, herzlich willkommen. This is our French room. It has had some odd smells lately. Yeah. We're thinking it's the seaweed pressing we've had in there for we three have years. A miniature kitchen with. We have two fridges, a microwave, a coffee maker, um, a place for dishwashing and food. Our closet with lots of yarn and neatly organized. Uh, Random. Uh, all right. Thank you for joining us on our gossip section of Waldorf Weekly. Yeah, Carson. <laughs> Where the cannolis at? <laughs> and that looks like it's it for another exciting episode of the Waldorf Weekly. But before we go, a shameless plug. If you have a YouTube account, please go to www.youtube.com slash Waldorf Weekly. And don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. Next week, a supplementary visiting survey, an abrasive leotard, find it all out on Waldorf Weekly. See you next time, folks.